21 says this, the words of the Lord. He says, and there shall be signs in the sun, moon and stars. And when these things begin to come to pass, he said, you people who listen to the Bible, look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Christ's return is near. What's he talking about? Signs in the sun, moon and stars? Well, they've done a lot of research recently and they've found that on these days, these years, there's been a lunar eclipse, what they call a blood moon, on, a Israel, on four Israeli feast days. It's only happened seven times since the time of Christ and then on. There they are. Only seven times. But look at the dates on which that happened. The last time was 1967, the Six Day War, when Israel gained Jerusalem. Look at the time before, 1949 to 1950. That's when Israel had a war again and gained control of the land of Israel. Look at the one before, the Spanish Inquisition. The Jews were kicked out of Europe by the Catholic powers and they went to Britain and there they prospered. In every occasion, it's resulted in difficult things for Jewry, resulting in something positive taking place. Now we cannot guarantee that's what's going to happen again, but here we are, 2004, 2005, on the Jewish feast days, it's got, there is blood moons. We've seen three of them so far. We saw an eclipse only a little while ago. In the Northern Hemisphere, they saw that. And we're to see one more. Does it mean the same? Remember the pattern before? Israel suffers, but is finally victorious. Well, we don't know what's going to happen. But in the near future, it looks like Israel may suffer. But she will come out victorious. But then the Middle East will be invaded by Russia, not Iran. And so, in Ezekiel 38, another point comes forward. There was The key word of Ezekiel 38 is that word company. It's an interesting word. It means a religious assembly. So the nations coming down have got religious support. Where's the religious support? Here's Mr. Putin. He's the leader of Eastern Orthodox Church. Putin has opened 25,000 churches since he came to power. At one point, free every day. He's supported by religion and he supports religion. And here's another religion that he is supported by. So Eastern Orthodoxy, Russian Orthodoxy, will support that invasion. You know, that word company, which speaks of a religious assembly, that word is used more times in this chapter than any other chapter in the Bible. So it's being stressed, stressed powerfully. But Ezekiel 38 says, when Russia comes down, they will think an evil thought and they will come against the people of Israel. Have a look at what's going on at the moment. Europe. Persecution of the Jews. Protests in Italy, Spain, Poland. Protesting against Israel and their attack. Well, it wasn't an attack. Their defence against Gaza. And that, that result was staggering. Look at this. Europe's anti-Semitism, the worst since Europe. Hitler. On a scale not seen since the times of Hitler. A thousand police were needed to safely bring the Jews home from Passover, uh, from their Sabbath. It was so dangerous. Anti-Semitism has increased by 400%. Date, April the 15th, recent newspaper in Europe. So the Jews are fleeing from Europe. The numbers have increased by 32% last year, the largest number for 10 years. They're going to come into the Middle East, but they will not be liked. Russia, Europe will hate it and will invade it to take the land of Israel. 
and to conquer the Jews. Daniel speaks of this same invasion and he says, the king of the north, another term for Russia, shall come against him, Turkey. Very interesting. Turkey at the moment is not very friendly with Russia. The leader of Turkey, Ergodon, had some words to say to Mr Putin over the phone. Mr Ergodon said, don't be cruel to the Tatars. Who are the Tatars? The ethnic Turks in Crimea. He says, if you're cruel to those Tatars, we will close the Bosporus, that waterway, and you will not get your navy out. Russia has been cruel to the Tatars. It's been well reported. And since they took Crimea late last, early last year, they have persecuted the Tatars. So what's going to happen? Well, have a look at what's found on the top of most churches in Russia. Cross. Not a cross like you might see in Suva. Look at this. What's this? It's the moon. What's the symbol of? Turkey. The cross will control Turkey. Christianity will come back to Turkey. That's what they've been preaching for a long, long time. And so we expect that to happen. We expect them to take control of Turkey. And that writer that I spoke to you about before, way back before, said, we, the believers, and we pray that all of you might be that, in that group, ultimately, accepting the truth in the Bible, we have not to wait the advance of the Russian Gog against Constantinople. He says, before Russia takes Turkey, Christ will be here raising the dead. Raising the dead. How long away? How long could that be? Can't be far. So we've got to be prepared. But he goes on to say in Ezekiel 38, opposing this invasion will be the merchants of Tarshish, a name for Britain, and the young lions thereof. The lion is the symbol of the Commonwealth countries. There they are. Just off the map, there's another one called Fiji. Okay. But there we go. There's some of the lions. And those lions will be with Britain, the old lion, to oppose Russia when they come into the Middle East. So here in the red is the pro-Russian countries that will ally with Russia. And here are the countries in blue that will oppose Russia when Russia invades the Middle East. Is that happening? Well, here is a change that took place only a little while ago. There's the foreign minister of Britain. He was sacked. And a new man was put in charge. The difference was over Israel. As soon as he was put in power, he visited Israel. And Mr Netanyahu said, Britain has been very clear that Israel has the right to defend itself. Israel welcomes his moral clarity. So he went over and said, we're happy with you Jews. We're pro-Israel. He is another lion country. Canada with Israel. Mr Harper, the Prime Minister of Canada, went to the Knesset, the Parliament in Israel, and look what they got out for him. The red carpet. And his wings were full with Jews there to listen to him as he said nice things about Israel. Here's another country, Australia. This man just got voted in in this picture, Mr Abbott. And in his election speech, we are firmly committed to restoring Australian-Israel friendship. That's in the first speech he made. What about this man? He leads India. He had basically the biggest election victory ever seen in the world. So many people voted. And when he voted, very shortly after he voted in, he said, he's Israel's best friend. And the Indians came to him and said, can you fix up the economy of India so it can catch up with China? He said, yeah, no worries. He says, I'll invite the Jews over. They know how to run businesses and they will help us and guide us and we'll soon catch up and pass China. No worries. And so you can see, 
The polarisation taking place is exactly what we would expect from Ezekiel 38. The Tarshan countries, the Lion companies, countries will be support Israel and the others will oppose it. But why do they come down? Ezekiel 38 verse 13 says they come down for silver and gold. They come down for cattle and goods. Now I ask you at the moment, what's the world economy like? It's in a mess, particularly in Europe and Russia. It's in a mess. Okay? But Israel isn't. Israel is going very well, thank you. Look what they found only a few weeks ago, a few months ago, late last year. They found another huge oil field or gas field off the coast of Israel. So Haifa's about where my dot is. There's this Leviathan field, huge big field. Now they've found another one. That one's fully owned by the Jews. Fully owned, the third largest discovery in Israel waters. So the economy of Israel is booming as far as oil and natural gas is concerned. They are very clever people. You've all got cell phones. A little while you'll have to get rid of them and get an Israeli one. You know why? This is what you're going to get. It's called a sniff phone. Developed by Israel, just completed. And when you get on the phone, if you happen to breathe, of course you're going to breathe. It tests your m m breath. And if you've got anything wrong with you, a cold or the flu or maybe even got cancer, it sends all the information to a computer in Israel, instantly comes back with a statement of problem. And if it comes up with something nasty like that, you get down to the doctor fast. Early warning. Early warning. As well as that, you want to send your kids to school, you can buy one of these cars. Okay? Israel is bringing it out. They're going to make it in America, the biggest float on the American stock market. You know what the difference is? You don't have to drive it. You just program it and say, take the children to school. Goes to school with no accident and comes home. You can go to sleep on the back seat. Say you want to go to Nandy, punch in Nandy, where you go. And it'll drive you there. And they say it'll save at least 50,000 lives a year because there'll be no accidents with those cars. They detect distance from every other car and they will not make a mistake. It's all computerised. So, they will be rich and Russia will invade. Look what the Bible says now, Daniel 11, another quote in regard to that. He shall enter also into the glorious land and many countries shall be overthrown. So here's Russia and Europe. They'll move in. And opposing them will be the Tarshan powers led by Britain. And they will confront there at Jerusalem. What did the Bible say? Look what we started with. I will gather all nations against Jerusalem for battle. And what will happen at that time? His feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof a big earthquake. It's not far away. That's what Ezekiel 38 goes on to say. Now I might read for you just a few verses. And it says this, verse 18, And it shall come to pass at the same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, said the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face, for in my jealousy... And in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. So that the fish of the sea and the fowl of heaven and the beasts of the earth and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake my presence and the mountain shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. That's what Zechariah 14 says. And it says, in the midst of that, Christ returns to judge the nations. Now the issue for us is, are we going to be there? The time is super short. Look what we've looked at tonight. We've been through verse after verse after verse. And all of them are being systematically fulfilled. It can't be far away. If you want to be in that kingdom, we've got to do what Christ wants. We've got to do what God asks. 
The kingdom will be a lovely place, a wonderful place. It will be a joyful time. The Bible ends in Revelation. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, nor suffering, nor sorrow. What a wonderful time it will be. Are we going to be there? Well, our world is in a mess. There shall be upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity. Russia on the move, Iran building nuclear weapons, all sorts of horrible things like that. Men's hearts failing them for fear. Everybody is terrified of what's going on. But he says, when these things begin, begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. It's certainly beginning, isn't it? How long have we got? Well, the kingdom's going to be a wonderful place, ruled by Christ. He gave his life for us. You couldn't have a more kindly, just ruler. You were ruled over by a good government. The believers today will be made the rulers of tomorrow. Worldwide peace. It will be one language, no more problems. Communicating. It will be one worldwide language. All will worship the one true God. There will be true security. You can walk the streets safely. There will be agricultural plenty. Nobody's starving. The desert will blossom as the rose, says the scriptures. There will be no shortage of food. It's clear as dark. So let's conclude with these words. Remember Jesus ascended from the Mount of Olives. That's another picture of the Mount of Olives taken from the Temple Mount. Just before he ascended into heaven, he gave his final message. He gave final words. Now, they've got to be the most critical words. People do that. When they leave, not to come back again for many years, they give final words. And so it is with Jesus. And this is what he said. He said unto them, Go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptised shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be condemned. It's straightforward. There are three steps to salvation, says Jesus Christ, the future ruler. You want a place there? We've got to do what he says. We can't muck around. So what did he say first? Believe the gospel. Now the Bible tells us there are false gospels. Galatians chapter 1. We must believe the true good news, which is the things concerning the kingdom of God and the things concerning salvation in Jesus Christ. We've got to believe the true good news. And then having done that, we must be baptised. We can't just have some sort of sprinkling that happens when we're a child. We never knew the gospel. You've got to know that first. And then you've got to be baptised. What is baptism? Total immersion in water. Symbolic of the death, burial and resurrection. It's a guarantee by us that we'll follow in the footsteps of Christ. It's our confession that we'll do that. And we've got to do it. And lastly, we've got to walk faithfully until he comes. Are you doing those things? Are you doing those things? Well, now's the time to seek the right way because I'm telling you, the time is super, super short.